Hi, and welcome to this video about maximum handles in a process. We know that every process has its own handle table, and these handles point to various kernel objects. And the question I'd like to answer in this uh, video is, how many handles can we actually create in a process? So first we need to understand what's the cost of a handle in general. A handle points to a handle entry, which is part of system space, pointing to by some pointer within the e-process data structure that manages a process, it contains the following entities. We have the object address, this is the beginning of where the object actually starts in system space, and for that we need 44 bits. Why? Because all the objects start on a 16-byte boundary, this is the case for all kernel objects, so the last four bits are always zero, and 48 bits is the current maximum virtual address space supported in kernel space, that's 128 terabytes. Then we have the access mask of the handle in question, which means that not all handles are born the same. Each handle has its own powers based on that access mask, and then there's a bunch of flags. One flag is called inheritance, this is used for handle inheritance, which is a feature that allows sharing kernel objects in a particular way. I'll discuss that in a separate video. There's another flag called protect from close that prevents that handle from being closed by calling close handle. I'll discuss this flag as well in a separate video. And there's another one called audit on close, which allows an administrator to configure setting some logging when certain handles to certain object types are being closed. So let's see if we can do a test and see how many handles we can actually create in a process. So here goes, here's Visual Studio, let me create a new project here. As usual we'll create a C++ console application here. Let's call that Max Handles. What I'd like to do here is to create as many handles as I possibly can and see what we get when we look at something like Task Manager. So I'm going to remove all this boilerplate uninteresting code. In fact, we can get to the maximum number of handles in two distinct ways, and both of them are valuable in order to understand what is going on. So let's start with the first one, let's call that max handles one And this function will create as many handles as possible by creating an object in a loop. So we can do something like this, we can have uh, a handle to whatever, it doesn't really matter what that something is, let's say a mutex. And again, the parameters here don't really matter for our purposes, we just want to create a new mutex. And once we get a handle which is null, which means we failed creating that mutex, we're going to break. Otherwise, we'll just increase the counter and return that counter back to whoever called us. So we're creating as many mutexes as we possibly can, until we're failing essentially. So in the main function, I'm going to call this max handles one function simply to uh, to see what it returns to me, and then we'll just write the result. So total handles and see what we get as a result. So here's count. And in order for me to see all these things before the process shuts down, I'm going to keep the process alive by using sleep infinite. So essentially this will cause the thread to go into a wait state indefinitely, so we'll never reach this return zero statement, but doesn't matter. The point is that we want to, to be able to, um, to see the process while it's still holding on to these handles. So if I go ahead and open a task manager here, and I've uh, added the handles column and sorted by handles, currently the system process has the most number of handles, I'm going to press Ctrl F5 to run this, so here goes, I'm running this, and you can see that number of handles grows rapidly until we're done. We can see number of handles as task manager shows them to be 16,711,680. The information that we see in the console window is slightly smaller number, and that's because when the process started calling this max handles one function, there were already some handles that have been created by the C runtime, which is the one that's calling our main function. So that's nice, so we can see number of handles here. Can we get some accommodation as to how much memory is being consumed by these handles? And so if I go ahead and right click and select columns here in task manager, we can add 
a column called page pool. And page pool represents the kernel memory that is associated with a, a particular process, that is the cost of certain kernel memory that is associated with the process uh, as we can see here. So the page pool size here is about 256 megabytes. And if you take the 16 million 700 something thousand and multiply by 16 bytes, as we've seen in the slide, we get roughly 256 megabytes. So this explains this exact number right here. If I go ahead and open another tool, which is Object Explorer, something we've seen in previous videos, we can look at the number of uh, handles and objects here for something like a mutex, which we've just created. Notice the number of handles is 16 million something, number of objects is also 16 million something, which means that we have in fact created 16 million something mutexes, each one being pointed to by a single handle. So we have lots of mutexes, not just lots of handles. And this means that in fact we're consuming even more memory than that because we're consuming more memory because of the mutex itself. Notice if we go to the performance tab we can look at the size of non-page pool. A non-page pool is kernel memory that is never paged out. It's always in physical memory in RAM. And I'm looking at that because mutex objects, as we can see here, are allocated from non-page pool. So non-page NX just means non-page non-executable memory. Which means that the memory here that we see might have been smaller earlier. Let's try it out again. Let me close this process. So all these handles will now go away and all these objects will go away as well. You can see the number of mutexes has been decremented significantly. Number of handles and mutexes is now much smaller. Still the peak number of objects and the peak number of handles is still very large because that just counts the maximum number of handles and objects that have been around for this kind of object type since Windows started. But if you go back to Task Manager, you can see the non-page pool has been decremented to 1.6 gigabytes only. So if I go ahead and run this again, we'll see that the consumption here will grow significantly, and that's because 16 million something mutexes have been created. And this is exactly what happens now, and again we get to the same cost here, so 256 megabytes is not nothing, but it's relatively a small price to pay compared to the real price here, which is the cost of creating several millions uh, of mutexes, which means we're consuming more than 2 gigabytes because of that, which is much more costly than just 256 megabytes from page pool. Now, here's another way to get to the maximum number of handles in the process. So let's try another example here. Let's call that max handles 2. With max handles 2, what we'll do, we'll create a single mutex. Let's just go ahead and copy this code here. We'll create a single mutex and initialize the count to 1 and then we'll have a loop that's going to call the duplicate handle API to create another handle to this same mutex in the same process. Duplicate handle allows us to duplicate the handle from one process to another, but of course the two processes could be the same one. So I have H here and the target is going to be get current process as well. That's my own process here. And there's a H target which is going to be the result. And then we have some uh, access which we don't care about and we have um, another inheritance bit which we don't care about either. And the last one is a bunch of flags. We're going to use duplicate same access here to say that I want to make a duplication as having the same access. And as long as this succeeds, I'm going to increment the count. And of course, we have H target here, which we're essentially ignoring, but this handle will be created. Once we're done, I can go ahead and return count from this function. So if I go ahead now and make a change here to max handles too, let's see what we have now. So here's task manager. And notice what we have in a non-page pool, currently 1.6 gigabytes. If I press Ctrl F5 to run this, you can see that it doesn't really change. Even though number of handles has grown to the maximum that we've seen earlier, number of the actual per performance in terms of memory here hasn't really budged at all. And that's because we've created a single mutex and simply used 16 million handles pointing to that same mutex. 
we can see that in Object Explorer it says that there are 16 million handles of, for mute access, but only a few handful of thousands of mute access. In fact, we can even go to see the process handles here for the max handles uh, process. The same thing, of course, you can see with the Process Explorer tool. And what we'll see is that most of the handles that are in this process, which are, we're talking about 16 million handles uh, something, most of them simply pointing to exactly the same mutex. You'll notice the object address here is exactly the same, which means it is the same mutex. We have these millions and millions upon millions of handles to the same mutex. If I double click to see the properties of, of this particular object, then it would take some time to show them and that's because it also hunts for all the handles to this uh, mutex and we know there are 16 million something of those laying around so it will take some time for this dialog to show up this is a very extreme kind of situation and while it's doing that let me show you another thing if we go back to max handle 1 we can see that uh, this depends on the objects we're creating. In this case, we're creating a mutex, which is a relatively small object. However, if I change that to something bigger, like a job object, and job objects are much bigger in terms of the kernel memory they occupy than mutex objects, then the result is going to be significantly different. Let me go back to max handles one here. So the dialog still takes time to appear, so I'm not going to wait uh, to, for too long, but here goes. We can see that we have many handles uh, for this mute, same one single mutex. And of course, we have all these 16 million handles to that same mutex coming from the same process, really. So now let's try this option here. I'm going to first have to kill the process, of course, to uh, close all these 16 million handles. Let's see if I missed anything. No, seems to be okay. Let me run that, but this time I'm going to create these many job objects. And that's going to be much more difficult. So I've run that, and you notice that memory is starting to climb very rapidly. And that's because job objects are much, much bigger than uh, mutex objects. So you can see memory here is rising rapidly, and job objects are also allocated from non-page pool, which means they are allocated from RAM directly. You can see the number of handles grows, but relatively slowly and that's because it takes time to create all these job objects a job object uh, has a more costly initialization than a mutex object so you can see it's still working on those and notice the consumption here is rising rapidly in fact maybe i will even run out of memory if things get really um with a heavy load here um, but uh, my system right now is not running uh, too many processes at the same time, so I'm not consuming too much memory, hopefully. So maybe we'll be able to accommodate all these job objects, but notice the commit limit here is 128 uh, gigabytes at this point, and I'm really going uh, very close to that. So let's see what the handle count currently is. We're very close to getting to the maximum, so I think I'll be able to accommodate that, but just barely. And it means that a lot less memory will be available for other processes. And we're done. We're, we came very close to my commit limit uh, at this point. I have lots of RAM, but even that uh, was kind of very close to being overwhelmed uh, by these so many job objects. So we managed to get to the maximum as, as we expect here. If we look at uh, the, the uh, Object Explorer tool, we should be able to see the fact that we have these many job objects. Let me run it again. I think it went into a cardiac arrest or something because of the multitude of objects that are being created. Let me try this again. And you can see we have many, many job objects, millions of job objects, and millions of handles pointing to these millions of job objects. So we're consuming lots of memory right now. And once I close this process, you'll notice that it takes time for all that memory to actually be freed. It takes time because now we need to destroy more than 16 million objects, specifically 16 million job objects. So I've closed the process, but it's not really closed just yet. All the handles are being closed now. You can see the non-page memory is decreasing rapidly and eventually will go back to the original value that we started with, 
probably something around 1.6 gigabytes. So it takes some time, but this is what we get because of those many job objects that we have created. So although the number of handles that we can reach is limited to 16 million something, and the cost of the handles is 256 megabytes or so, the real cost could be the actual objects being pointed to by these handles. And currently, we can see the non-page pool has dropped significantly, even though uh, apparently Task Manager here doesn't show a big reduction of RAM, which is kind of weird. It looks like a kind of bug in, in Task Manager for whatever reason. Um, that's uh, something to investigate uh, at another time. 